So at exactly the moment when you need more information, not less, less lying, not more, Big Tech has aligned with intel agencies to curate everything you learn about the war being fought in your name in Ukraine and censor anyone who disagrees with them. And the censorship is increasing. Senator Mark Warner has called on his donors in the tech monopolies to censor pro-Russia social media posts. And they oblige, including by Americans, by the way. And they get to decide what pro-Russia is. Meanwhile, the television network Russia Today, which is Russia's state media, is being censored all over the world. It's not an endorsement of Russia Today to note. It might be interesting to know what the other side is saying. It might be good to have more information, not less. Glenn Greenwald has been making this point for a long time. He's an independent journalist. We're happy to have him join us tonight. Glenn, thanks so much for coming on. The censorship seems very open without apology, and it seems more widespread than maybe I've ever seen it. Definitely without any precedent that I can remember as well. I mean, you'll probably recall in the days after 9-11, Bill Maher, when he was at ABC, was fired because he said that he doesn't think the 9-11 hijackers should be regarded as cowards, that whatever else you want to say about them, it's evil, but it takes courage to fly a plane into a building and end your life for a cause. And there was a lot of sense, even when we were attacked in the immediate aftermath, that maybe it's not a good, a good, good idea for people to just be fired because it'll create this atmosphere where no one can speak. It's so much worse. I think one of the things that's gotten overlooked when we talk about big tech is how closely aligned they are to the U.S. security state. They have huge contracts with the Pentagon, the CIA, for cloud services, for all kinds of other services. And so often their censorship is purely aligned with U.S. foreign policy in a way I think is quite odious. There used to be, the, and you grew up in the United States, as I did, we're roughly the same age. There was this sense when we were kids that we're Americans. We can read whatever we want. They had banned books week at libraries where librarians fought back against censorship, which didn't really exist when we were kids. What about that idea that as an American citizen, you have a right to read whatever the hell you want back off? What, where is that? Yeah, uh, so just to, for the record, I'm significantly younger than you, but I accept that we're in the same general <laughs> generational grouping. But I, I mean, I, I wonder that because, you know, one of the first articles I ever wrote after I got into journalism was when the British historian David Irving was criminally convicted in Austria for teaching things about the Holocaust that were prohibited, namely denialism. And I wrote an article about how all Americans instinctively recoil from that because we just have embedded within us the view that government shouldn't be dictating what we can and can't hear and what we can and can't say. Fifteen years later, Tucker, there's almost, there's very little of that ethos, certainly not as a consensus. And I'm so grateful for the First Amendment because without it, I'm certain that we would have all kinds of laws being enacted, empowering the state, not just to ban ideas, but to criminalize them as well. Well, you'd be in prison like you would, you'd be in I mean, we'd be, we'd be bringing you, you know, extra underarm deodorant. Yeah. Uh, it, right. Without the First Amendment. But it seems like they're getting around it by just employing their, effectively their agents in the tech monopolies to crush free speech. One of the things that I think has been very undernoticed is that for the past 18 months, with the Democrats, with their control in both houses of Congress, have repeatedly summoned tech executives to Congress and explicitly said to them, if you don't start censoring more the way we're telling you to, you will suffer legal and regulatory reprisals. And there's Supreme Court rulings that say that, of course, the First Amendment bans the government from directly censoring, but it also bans the government from pressuring or coercing private actors to censor on their behalf in the way the Constitution prohibits. And that's exactly what's been happening and still is happening ever more so with this war. It's horrifying. And you have been one of the voices fighting back against it. We're grateful for that. Glenn Greenwald, appreciate it. Good to be with you,